Hi, everybody. It's me, Mr. Big. And we we'll talk today in the rabbit hole and talk to you about a guy by the name of John Keel. John Keel well, was a writer. He was a journalist. He was a researcher. He researched everything from UFOs, cryptids, in the world of strange. And the more he researched the world of the strange, the more his world got. Interesting, when you read his book, probably his best work that most people know, The Mothman Prophecies, he goes in quite the detail on how he researched what was going on in West Virginia with Mothman, the more his world got strange. And the more it got strange, the more he looked into why it got strange, what was going on, the more stranger it got. Interesting that. In his work over time, he did a chart looking at the days of the week that you can see most of your folks, right? It was their pattern. And the one he found quickly was most UFOs were seen on Wednesday. Interesting. I mean, that's what the guy did. They had spent a lot of time researching things. He spent a lot of time looking into the world that he saw around him. Right? He wanted to tell the world about the world that he observed around him with his own two eyes. His own uh, two eyes. His own phenomena that was seen. By interviewing with people, by looking for things that other people were seeing, by trying to find out what they actually were seeing, Nowhere his world got strange. The more books he wrote. I think he wrote a total of seven or eight books. The two I like to recommend is, of course, Mothman Prophecies. Another one called uh, on Our Haunted Planet. Uh, Our Haunted Planet, I think, creates Mothman Prophecies, but they're both good work. On um, Our Haunted Planet, he talks about all kinds of things going on that he can't explain. No idea what's going on. He wants to talk about them. He doesn't come to conclusions necessarily. He points out what he sees, what he observes with his own eyes, things he can touch, see, and feel. Um, yeah. yeah, he says some interesting things. In fact, in Mothman Prophecies, he advises a other fellow researcher, a reporter, who experienced so much crazy things in his life, he can't take it anymore. He says, hey, I can't take this shit anymore. I can't do this shit anymore. How do I get out of it? And um, John Keel says, well, if you want to get out of this world, you quit. You simply burn your files, get rid of your files, you quit researching the stuff, you walk away. And I did. The guy was so disturbed about what he was seeing, what he was experiencing. As he was doing research, he had to walk away. Right? I mean, all the crazy things people are doing, all the crazy things. And to this day, People see things. People do whatever they do, right? I mean, we have Mothman not only in West Virginia. Now people see him in um, Chicago, a big city, Chicago, a huge city. But people think they see Mothman. Deep people think they saw Mothman in West Virginia. People claim to see Mothman in Wisconsin. In fact, um, one of the silly paranormal talk shows talks about the Mothman of La Crosse, and the mountains of La Crosse. Sadly, I live in Wisconsin. I've been to Lacrosse, the New Orleans and Lacrosse. The best we have in Lacrosse are bluffs. A bluff is far different than a mountain, but it makes for good TV. And that's the thing. He doesn't quite get there per se, but that's where we are now. We're so far into the world of the weird that TV shows are being developed, movies are being made that talks about the weird and not in a research way, but in a way, they gain likes, should we say, they gain people buy tickets, which is fine. It's fine. We wouldn't make make, right? Um, but again, I think we lose something when we stop the research. And one thing he goes on his way, and something I will repeat during this show and other shows I do in UFOs time and again, the more you look into things such as UFOs, the more you look into things like encrypted, the more involved you get in the paranormal, the more stranger your life comes. And it will get weird. It'll get weird in a hurry. Back in the day when I ran with Wiccans, which are at, people practicing Wicca, witches, I would call them, um, one of them had strange lives. Now that they have strange lives because, well, they all might be practicing Wicca, but also doing too many drugs. Yeah, that might be it. Or um, not only were they practicing Wicca, or some people were do, um, OTL doing ceremonial magic, was it because they're calling up things they cannot control or things they had no idea what they're dealing with? Or because they had really fucked up lives? They didn't have jobs. 
They're living house to house, hand to mouth. Many of them are beggars. Many, I should say some of them are beggars, not many of them. You know, they're doing all kinds of interesting things. Back in the early 80s, many of them were having unprotected sex and AIDS came. Yeah, AIDS was hell. AIDS was hell in the Wiccan community. You got to practice safe sex, right? Some of them weren't too big a believer in that. But again, what it is, again, the world that Janet Keel researches, the world he illustrates is one of weirdnesses, right? Does the weirdness world attract other weird people who experiences weird things? Or, well, as he would think, the more you get involved in the weird world, the more your world becomes weird because you're attracting that energy to you, right? I mean, here I live in an old house. I live in a 110, 115 year old house. And it creaks and settles and all stuff like that, right? But we've had people come here. I myself see a little guy, about six inches tall. He walks out of one wall and walks in another wall. He walk across the room, walk out again, he walk out of one wall and walk into another wall, right? Doesn't stop to say hi, just walk across the floor. The cats won't stop to look at him. Um, and like something's going on here, like they see a mouse, but it's definitely human, right? Um, my daughter, my youngest daughter's bedroom, there's a mobile, and her friends would sleep overnight, as kids do. And they were woken up by voices in the room, some of them talking about they wanted the kids to play with them, right? Things like that. It got to the point where many of my daughter's friends went stay overnight because they did not want to see the, the figure in the mobile. They did not want to see the mobile move at night. They didn't want to see the thing talk to them, right? It wasn't anything bad, anything evil, anything like that. This basically, for lack of a better word, say a kobold. Let's point this out, too. All these kids who saw the kobold, what we for, we're going to call the kobold, saw the, the figure of the thing, identity, about 12 or 13, right? About the age of going to hit puberty. It's been alleged and suggested by better researchers than I'll ever be, that most children, girls, will start to see paranormal things like ghosts and stuff like that around the time they hit puberty. Is it the energy that they're getting? Is it the fact that their bodies are changing stuff that's bringing up a lot of energy and perhaps bringing in these energies too? Don't know. That's an interesting subject to talk about. I don't think Shannon Killen talks about that, but he does talk about... The more things you look into, which are strange, the more strange things happen. Now, and it's, and he'll told his friend, the reporter, that, hey, if you want to get out of this business, if you don't see the stuff anymore, if you want to deal with the weirdness anymore, quit. Burn your files, walk away. That's what, okay, that's what the guy did. John Kill would do something different. Once John Kill said, run into what we call now men in black, that he would look into who these people were why they were doing it, what was going on. And the more he looked into them, the more his world got weird, got very, very, very weird, right? I mean, I would recommend you read the book, Our Haunted Planet and Mothman Prophecies, and you'll go into these things in a little bit of detail, especially Mothman Prophecies. Also around this time in West Virginia, people were predicting things. Something else that runs consistently when it comes to many things in the UFO phenomena, is people who get contacted, let's say contacted, as I write about in my book, um, UFO cults, I talk about a bunch of cults um, and how they developed and what they're doing today, right? Um, basically, they hit harmless, as they are, but basically harmless, harmless is what it is. Um, but one thing that I forgot to do in that book and perhaps I should do an epilogue, is what happens to the cult figures, the or other so-called cults that fall up right away, because the entity that was talking to them quits. Or the, or the entity that was talking to them, predicting different things, suggesting different things in their lives that they want to change, perhaps saying there's a comet coming to get them, right? Like Heaven's Gate. Quit talking to them. Or what happens when these entities give them misinformation on purpose? Now, that's a good thing. I mean, what do these entities do? I mean, why do the entities talk to people? Why do they talk to one person or another? No, I don't know. No, no clue, right? One reason is, is I talk to other people 
involved in total pollination and why I don't believe in wage awards. Because I've seen too many weird things happen to people who do, right? I've only had to see it once or twice before I figured out that I want nothing to do with a Ouija board. Nothing. I want nothing to do with seances. Nothing. Right? And more than one come to a supposed haunted location and look around. I'll happily do. I'll be happy to come to a haunted location and provide what I call a spirit shower. Just try to catch the ghost, for lack of a better word, and get rid of it. Happy to do that. I'm happy to give you charms and stuff and the like to help you if you think you're being bothered by them to protect you. That, that's not have a problem with. But I won't do sands. I don't fuck. I'm sorry. I don't mess with the rage boards. Not worth it. Because I believe what John Keel has to say about people who do involve in the weird happen. I mean, they get more weird more weird things come. I mean, I don't know what I would do if my phone started ring and people would tell me weird things in the phone or people come to my door and talk to me about weird things. Well, why I close the door? I do I hang up the phone. That, that goes well, well saying, right? But if I would totally turn the situation over to the police and say, hey, what's going on here? And they weren't able to help me because they had no records of these phone calls or nobody was able to spot these people while I was seeing, that would be kind of scary. It would be kind of scary. And I'd rather not go there in the first place. I'd rather stay the hell with them. Right? The hell with them. I mean, that's probably when it comes to the UFOs and other things of that nature, like big feet. Because again, the more the more you investigate it, the more weird things happen to you. It's like it's trying to bring you in. It's trying to bring you in. It's trying to feed off that energy that you give them when you become an investigator and start looking into them. Right? What's going on? How can they play with your mind? Because, in fact, John Keel would think in his books, especially with my prophecy, that they're playing with us. That the things that are creating the UFOs, the things which are creating the cryptids, the things which are creating whatever might be, are playing with us. He doesn't know why. That's the big thing, big point he makes is he makes it. He just has no idea why. In other books, uh, like Operation Trojan Horse, he talks about what he thinks is going on. He has come up with some conclusions that work for him. Right? And they're very disturbing conclusions. Very disturbing conclusions. Um, basically, let's paraphrase some of this stuff by saying that what he thinks is that the universal mind may not be sane. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying that the powers that be that control UFOs, that control cryptids, that control the paranormal, may not be sane. And then they screen with us because they can. They screen with us because they enjoy doing so. They do it, they're doing it because of what else so they have to do, right? We're opening our, ourselves up to them. Now, when we investigate, in my opinion, as well, I, I, do, do, the, I do believe this 100,000%. When we open ourselves up to the world of the strange, we open ourselves up to the world of the paranormal, we open up ourselves to the world of the UFOs, and investigate them with a couple guys of woods because they got nothing better to do, right? By watching some of the TV. When we go out in the woods looking, we start interviewing, we start building UFO old detectors and going to sites that people claim to see something. When you start to open up your mind to what's going on, yeah, your mind becomes open. Other things, in my opinion, can start playing with it. Something that Jan Keel talks about. I recommend that you read his book. I recommend highly, if you're all interested in UFOs and cryptids and that sort of thing, read his books. Read Our Haunted Planet, start with that one, then go to Mothman Prophecies, and then read the rest if you want to. On the variable on Amazon, I think it'd be pretty pricey. But I think, in my opinion, they're well worth reading. Well worth reading. Um, yeah. Um, if One thing we talk about, I talk about, and um, UFO calls. If you can go out investigating UFOs, right? Be smart. It's like you would anytime you go out to the woods. Go, if you go hunting, go fishing, you know, walk away from your car for any length of time, for any distance away, be smart, have a cell phone. Have people know where you're going. 
you know where you're going, have a map where you're going to be, be able to find your way out. Have that cell phone in case you get lost, you can call for help or something. You know, be, be, be sensible. Be sensible also, take pen and paper and write down, if you're investigating your falls, write down what you're going through. Write down what you're what you've seen, dates and times. You know, don't keep your files on your computer because those computers can be really, truly messed with by anything, right? But anyway, keep it in pen and paper. And be prepared for your life to go strange. If your life starts to go strange, you can't handle it. Many people can't. God knows I can't. Burn your files, give them away, walk away. Take a bit of a hobby. Take up fishing. Take up knitting. Take up bird watching. No, bird watching might be too much. Take up knitting. Take up bite cannon. Take up chess. Let's keep the hell away from the world of the strange. Keep the hell away from the world of the rabbit hole. Because I'm talking about the rabbit hole type stuff, because it's not conspiracies and UFOs and cryptids. Well, more weird things happen. They might, but not more than I can handle because I'm not going to go too far into it, right? I'm not, <laughs> I have no plans. I have no plans to talk to anybody that's seen UFO. None. I have no plans to go to investigate a, a site of a UFO was seen. None, right? I talk to people who've seen them. I talk to writers who've written books about them. Uh, those conversations. I go to the paranormal camp of Milwaukee come October. I plan to do that. I have my um, in the rabbit hole show, right? I think I may even have a table there. I might be motivated to write another book or two, right? Do that sort of thing. Be careful. And I'll be prepared. I'll be very much prepared to walk away. It's not worth what the little sanity I have left. And some people would say I probably lost one I had before. Yeah, well, it happens when you get old. Um, things about John Keel. The most important thing also is people believe they get information from whatever, right? Like so many people thought, thought they, John Keel thought himself that Martha Luther King was going to be assassinated. So he went on his way to let somebody know, hey, this one of the things that happened. He needs to be careful, right? I mean, it's better, better. They call and people think you're a fool. Then you think that, hey, something might happen. You don't make that call. You don't reach out and something happens, right? Better be, better be safe than sorry, right? Now, the assassination, and I read the book for a while. As I was saying, the assassination, as Kill thought it was going to happen, did not happen. It didn't happen a couple months later, right? But how much he knew of advanced knowledge of what was really going to happen, who knows? He himself would say, who knows, right? He never, he never said he was psychic. He knows any of that stuff, right? He was curious what was going on. Another guy also was, who predates um, killed by, God, years, 50 years, his name of the name is Charles Fort. Where we get the word for, I can't pronounce the word. Um, he did a lot of research, a lot of writing. He was a journalist. He wrote books about it as well. And the thing he did in his time, in his writing, is he wrote a lot about what was going on. Rain of blood, rains of frogs, meat raining down, stones, giant stones raining down, rain down, right? Things he was able to document that happened, truly, really, truly really happened by multiple witnesses. Other things he dismissed because, well, when he looked into it, he found out it was basically bullshit, right? He's more than willing to call it bullshit. At the same time, he's willing to document things that was going on. People walking down the street disappearing, people playing Yeti, people seeing UFOs. At the time, was, no, they weren't calling you folks, and you know, that was what it is, right? And Charles Fort led the way. Um, he did, did say, Hey, this stuff is going on. He wrote a book called Book of the Dand. You can get that one, I think it's free. I think it's free on Kindle. I think you can buy it for free on Kindle. I think I get my copy for free, and you know, I highly, highly recommend it. Very, very worthwhile reading. In some regards, kind of sort of scary. And it's okay. If you just want to read these books and look into these things, as you would say, a bad science fiction film or a bad horror film, so you can become scared for a while, fine. Knock yourself out. If you want to go look into these things with your friends, as I said, the ghost hunter, because ghost hunter is a TV show. But for something to do, again, fine. Knock yourself out, right? But knowing that when you go into it, something weird that might happen to you, you're looking for that tillation throw. That might be why they do it. Perhaps they feed off the dopamine that we get. Because we get scared, we release dopamine. 
they probably maybe the entities, whatever they might be, that can join these things, feed off the dopamine, right? Here's another story. Happened my home. Happened to me. In my kitchen, I have a cabinet, two part cabinet, two two. This is a base floor base. Is a place where the china's kept. It weighs probably 400 pounds. It took two, three people to carry it out. So, right, when we, get, when we brought it in. At the time this happened, it was full of china. So, let's say at the time it was around 500 pounds. When I walk into the kitchen one night from my office, it's the door behind me. I walked from the door into the kitchen. The upper part of the cabinet got levitated off the base unit about four feet into the kitchen and fell on the floor, smashing probably 90% of the china. Wow. I didn't move it. I couldn't move a million years. The cat's are way too small to move it, right? Even though we have a train track that, drive, that comes through here, um, it vibrates. You feel it vibrate when it comes through full of coal. It's too far away to move that heavy of an object to the point it would be falling off the cabinet, that's off the base metal. Something did that. Who it was, who knows? Who knows? Um, could have been the trains and all? Sure. Wasn't me, wasn't the cats, right? But it happened. Who knows? We need to say we put we we covered it, we could clean the mess and went on our way, right? Um, yeah, but who knows what I mean we look into going into but again again, how about enough strange experiences like the guy walking off the floor, the cabinet was going on in my youngest daughter's room at the time. Do you really want to go down those rabbit holes? As I'm fascinated by those rabbit holes. I really, really don't want to go down them too far. I have a friend, a good friend. Um, he lives in northern Wisconsin. He's from Australia. And he got he got a doctorate degree in UFOs, studying UFOs. It's UFO folklore sort of thing, right? And now he's up in northern Wisconsin. He's working on a project about UFOs. I mean, doing some really heavy duty research about people early on in the Early on, after 47, 1947, was starting the modern take of UFOs. UFOs have been around for hundreds of years. Back in the 1890s, people were seeing what they called airships, right? What we would call Zeppelins. This is long before Zeppelins were ever made. They were the main Zeppelins were made. They were made in, oh, Germany. They didn't have the technology to fly them to the United States. Nor would they be able to fly them to the American West. How would they do that? There was no, no, that the infrastructure needed in the American West at that time, or until probably 1910, 19, or after the after the First World War, to be able to do that with an airship. But they were there. People saw them. People documented them. People, people told them, you know, she drew pictures. Law enforcement drew pictures. Nobody knew what was going on. But, um, yeah, people were interested. Strange world we live in. That's the thing that Janet Kiel writes about. Uh, haunted planet that Charles Fort wrote about. In Book of the Damned. It's what's going on. Why is it going on? That's something we need to keep our eyes out because people say that we should trust science. The science is no. Is it really? It wasn't long ago that we were told that if you got the COVID vaccine, you couldn't catch it. You got the COVID vaccine, you would be able to give it. But yet we find out that's a lie. Yeah, because they knew at the time they were lying. We were told those little cloth masks would protect us. We should need to wear them. About two weeks, right? Flatten the curve would be effective. Mm. Most of them, I suspect they thought it was, you know, they knew at the time it was wrong. Why did they lie? I mean, I mean, there's so many questions that we could ask us. Excuse me. About why science can't be trusted. I mean, I know to the point, maybe because I'm old. Now to the point of where I can't trust science. I can trust. I know the facts. I can trust science facts. I, I get the bone of my water. The freezing temperature of ice, water. Those things I can trust. Those things are proven facts, right? What scientists say going to happen, such as climate, global warming, not so much, because too many times, too many people have lied. Why do lie? Because of money. Same thing with the UFOs today. Why do we have so much things going on with UFOs? I know. It makes it very interesting to see this narrative go on. Because same, I got to quit now because I can go on forever. Once I go down these rabbit holes, I go down these rabbit holes. It was just supposed to be a basic introduction to John Keel to encourage you guys to please read 
our hundredth planet read Mothman prophecies. As we all know, at the end times when Moth people quit seeing Mothman, it took place for about 16 months. Around the time that it ended, that bridge fell, fell apart in West Virginia. The Mothman had nothing to do with it. Some people was, were dreaming that that bridge was going to fall, right? But nobody, nobody at that time said, oh, the Mothman was going to do it. They said the bridge might fall, right? And bridge fell. And around the time that bridge fell, Mothman in that part of West Virginia was no longer seen. I've read accounts of being seen, however, in Chicago, Wisconsin, different places, which include um, Franksville, right? None of the people would say it was a Thunderbird. I mean, that, Mothman takes different forms, which, of course, Jan Kills Hawk call, talks to his other books. Is why does one P person see a Mothman with the wings and the red eyes? Somebody else sees a Thunderbird, a Native American Thunderbird. Some people might say Yeti. I mean, all these things need should be looked into. All these things can be looked into. All these things can be researched and debated. There's nothing wrong, nothing wrong with any of that. But I'll tell you this, again, the more you research these things, the, I would expect the opportunity, I would be an opportunity, I would expect that the chances are your life gets weird and weirder and weirder when other things you run into might happen. You should be prepared for that. Don't say that if it's a big did not warn you. Yeah, don't say that. I said, be careful going in those rabbit holes because you once you go in, you may not come out. You may not come out the same way you went in. And it's really interesting about the phenomena is you really don't know how it's going to affect you when you start researching it, right? Yeah, anyway, um, if you like what I'm trying to do here today, you can buy my book, um, UFO Cults is on Amazon. I think it's 350. I know it's 350. It's, the book is called UFO Cults is Amazon. I'm tempted to do an epilogue in that book because I'd like to be able to talk about them, some of these people that these entities from other planets, right? I've talked to and quit talking to. What happens to them? Oh, yeah. It's all kinds of interesting and crazy things. All kinds of interesting and crazy with that. I absolutely without it out. So I'm going to go now. Again, this thing will keep going for a couple seconds, up to a minute after I click the um, end broadcast button. But it is what it is. Can't do much about it. But anyway, please buy my book, UFO Cults. I know it's on 350. Um, the Stray Cats definitely could um, 